بسم الله والحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته <clears throat> In Surah number 26 in Surah Al-Shu'ara Ayah number 88 and 89 Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us about what ultimately matters what is ultimately the most important thing? That day is coming, the day of judgment, the day of resurrection. On which day all the money in the world cannot help someone. Having all of their family members, children by their side will not do anything for them. إِلَّا مَنْ أَتَى اللَّهَ بِقَلْبٍ سَلِيمٍ Except for the one who comes to Allah with a sound heart. That someone who comes to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with a clean heart, with a sound heart. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us in the Qur'an what's meant exactly by the sound or clean heart. That the Arabs had a proverb and an expression, تُعْرَفُ الْأَشْيَاءُ بِأَدَّادِهَا Things are oftentimes understood best by looking at their opposites. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us about what does it look like when the heart is wrong. Allah is saying that the heart needs to be right. But what does it look like when the heart is wrong? فِي قُلُوبِهِمْ مَرَضٌ their hearts are diseased. They have these hearts, but their hearts do not grasp the truth. Their hearts do not understand the difference between right and wrong. The Prophet ﷺ, in a beautiful hadith in Sahih Muslim, he says, that the people that will enter paradise in the life of the hereafter, their hearts will be like the hearts of birds. What does that mean? Some of the scholars explain that it means that their hearts will be free from any kind of shirk, any kind of illness, any kind of bad thought. They will have no evil within their hearts. That just like a bird is this worry-free, carefree creature that flies around and enjoys God's green earth, the hearts of these people will be like that. In another narration, the Prophet ﷺ, he says, an al -bulhu, That the majority of the inhabitants of paradise will be people that many people in this world would have described as being naive. You know how when we describe people as naive because we say, oh, they're not cunning enough. They're not sharp enough. They don't understand how to play the game. And so we call them naive. The Prophet ﷺ is saying, you know what's going to be shocking? What will be shocking is when you come on the day of judgment and the majority of the people of paradise are exactly those people that we would have called naive. Because they weren't interested in playing the game. They were interested in having a clean heart and coming to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala without any kind of burden upon their heart. That Muhammad ibn Sirin, rahimahullah ta'ala, one of the great tabi'un, he says, Al-qalbu salim an ya'lama anna Allah haqqun. To have a good, clean heart, that means that you know that Allah is the truth. And you know that the day of judgment is coming and there's no doubt in the day of judgment. That Allah will resurrect us and raise us from our graves. Abdullah bin Abbas said, salim, To have a clean heart, it means yashhadu alla ilaha illallah. That person testifies that there is no one worthy of worship except for Allah. Mujahid and Al-Hasan Basri, they say, Ya'ni min ash-shirk, that person never associates a partner to Allah. 
Sa'id ibn al-Musayyab says, huwa al-qalbu sahi wa huwa qalbu al-mu'min. It means that your heart is good and that is the heart of a true believer. So this is what it means to have a clean heart. Allah has granted us this gift and this blessing of cognizance and consciousness and intelligence, the qalb. But this comes with a responsibility. Just like if you are given some great blessing, you then have a responsibility to that blessing. With great power comes great responsibility. With great blessings comes great accountability. I, if Allah blesses me with a beautiful home, I have to take care of that home, maintain that home, clean that home, guard that home, protect that home. It comes with that blessing. Many of the people listening here who have been blessed with children, Allah calls them a gift. Children are a blessing and a gift, but they come with a huge responsibility to protect them, to guard them, to safe keep them, to educate them, to teach them, to raise them, in, in, to raise them as believers with iman and faith and conviction and devotion and dedication and commitment and love for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So that is the gift of the heart that we have been given. But we have to make sure that that heart is good. We have to take care of it. And this is what it means to take care of it. Now, I wanted to also, at the same time, talk about and share how Allah places the emphasis on the heart because the heart is the core of the matter. Like I started off by saying, what ultimately matters, the heart is what matters. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in surah number 50, surah Qaf, a beautiful, powerful surah, beginning with ayah number 31, Allah says, وَأُزْلِفَتِ الْجَنَّةُ لِلْمُتَّقِينَ غَيْرَ بَعِيد. Paradise will be prepared and brought forth for the people that were conscious of God, who had a relationship with Allah, and it will be accessible, it will not be far away from their grasp. Ayah number 32, hafid. This is exactly what you were promised in the life of the world. And every single person who constantly turned back to Allah and was mindful of their relationship with Allah, this is what they were promised in the life of the world. Ayah number 33, Man bil ghaybi. That whosoever was mindful and fearful of Ar-Rahman, the most merciful, even when they were away from people's eyes, that even when they were in private and they could have committed any sin, no one was there to catch them, no one was there to watch them, but they were so mindful and fearful of Allah, وَجَاءَ بِقَلْبٍ munib, And then that person comes on the day of judgment to Allah with a heart that is filled with the love of Allah, that is completely submitted to Allah, Allah in devotion and dedication, completely contrite and humbled before their Creator. Ayah number 34, Allah says, Udukhuluha bi salamin. Allah will tell them, enter into paradise safe and sound. Valika yomul khulud. This is the day of eternity, of immortality. Ayah number 35, Lahumma yasha'una fiha waladayna mazid. And Allah says that they will be given in paradise anything and everything they ever desired, anything and everything they could ever want. We're supposed to sacrifice our desires in the life of this world. We're talking about the heart, what spoils the heart. Once again, I go to the analogy of the child. If you give your child every single thing they ask for, when they ask for it, how they ask for it, wherever they ask for it, you are spoiling your child. Any good parent knows this. Similarly, if you give this heart everything that it desires, in, in, because it's in a childlike state, it doesn't know any better, you will rot and spoil this heart. But if you take away some of those desires, you take away some of those indulgences, you sacrifice some of those things, it is like you are training your heart. You will keep your heart good. You will keep it safe. You will keep it sound. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says to this person on the day of judgment, you gave up what you wanted to do in the life of the world. So now here, you get whatever it is you desire. 
You can have everything and anything that you want. وَلَدَيْنَا مَزِيدٍ And there's so much more that you can't even fathom. وَكَمْ أَهْلَكْنَا قَبْلَهُمْ مِنْ قَرْنِ هُمْ أَشَدُّ مِنْهُمْ بَطَشَا فَنَقَّبُوا فِي الْبِلَادِ هَلْ مِنْ مَحِيسٍ In Ayam number 36, Allah says that there were many mightier people that came before you, but they were destroyed and annihilated. That these disbelievers who traveled all throughout the land, let them go and see and reflect, is there any escaping the judgment of God? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in ayah number 37, In this Quran is a reminder, it is a realization, it is a wake-up call. But for who? لِمَنْ كَانَ لَهُ قَلْبٌ For the person who has a good heart. For the person, for the person that has a good heart. For the person that has a good heart. Meaning what? Once again, something can be very, very good. Imagine maybe the most, you know, uh, amazing cuisine. Just some food that is remarkable. Prepared by a master chef. But you are sick. You are ill. You have blisters in your mouth. You are throwing up. You're not well. Will that food taste good to you? Absolutely not. Similarly, Allah says that this Quran will change your life. It'll wake you up. It'll teach you how to live your life. But your heart has to be good. Your heart must be good. أو ألقى السمعة and you have to listen carefully وهو شهيد while being attentive and the last point I wanted to make is I'm talking so much about the heart but aren't there other things? absolutely but the Prophet ﷺ in an authentic narration Bukhari and Muslim already explained this to us he said ألا وإن في الجسد مضغة within the body there is one organ there's one organ within the body إذا صلحت if it is correct, saluha al-jasadu kulluhu, the whole body will become correct. Wa idha fasadat, but if it is corrupted, fasadal 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 jasadu kulluhu, then the whole body will become corrupted. Allah wa hi al-qalb, it is the heart. So the heart is the leader of the body. And that's why in the hadith of Sahih Muslim, the Prophet ﷺ says, إِنَّ اللَّهَ لَا يَنظُرُ إِلَىٰ سُوَرِكُمْ وَأَمْوَالِكُمْ Allah does not look at your faces. Meaning you are not judged by your face. You are not judged by your wealth. The money in your pocket. وَلَكِنْ يَنظُرُ إِلَىٰ قُلُوبِكُمْ وَأَعْمَالِكُمْ You are judged based off of what's in your heart and the deeds that you do. Now, to talk about something more practical. Now what can we do to start correcting the condition of our heart? There, that's a huge science. That's a whole area of study in and of itself. The purification of the heart. tasfiya, The purification and the rectification of the soul and the heart. There are hundreds of texts written on this subject. There are, dozen, there are hundreds of resources available. I can just share the resources I'm aware of. But if you go to, for instance, the Qalam podcast, there are multiple series, not one, multiple series, talking about the purification of the heart, the purification of the soul. But you have to delve into that. You have to take that seriously. But I want to share something bite-sized that you can take home with you today. I will share a couple of du'as of the Prophet ﷺ. First and foremost, a du'a of the Qur'an. There's a narration actually, a really beautiful narration in the book of At-Tirmidhi. Umm Salama radiallahu ta'ala anha, our mother, Umm al-Mu'mineen, one of the wives of the Prophet ﷺ, she was asked, Ya Umm al-Mu'mineen, that, Ma kana akthar du'a'i Rasulullah ﷺ idha kana indaki. What was the most common du'a you heard the Prophet ﷺ making? قَالَتْ كَانَ أَكْثَرُ دُعَائِهِ The most common du'a he used to make, يَا مُقَلِّبَ الْقُلُوبِ ثَبِّتْ قَلْبِي عَلَى دِينِكَ Oh, the turner of the hearts, turn my heart onto your deen, your religion. Put me onto your faith. 
And this was the most common dua he used to make. And then the Prophet, when she asked the Prophet, why do you make this dua so frequently? He said that all the hearts of humanity are between the two fingers of a rahman He can turn them however he wishes. And then the narrator of this narration, he recited the verse of the Quran in Surah Ali Imran, verse number 8. Rabbana, our Lord, la tuzik qulubana. Do not derail our hearts. Do not take our hearts away from guidance. Ba'da idh hadaytana. After you have given us the blessing of guidance. Wahab lana min ladunka rahmatan. And bless us with your mercy. Inna ka antal wahab. Indeed, you are the great giver of gifts. You are the great bestower of blessings. So the first thing is, remember this dua from the Quran. Rabbana la tuzikulubana. Ba'da idh hadaytana. Understand it and believe it when you are reading it. The dua of the Prophet Ya Muqallib al Qulub, Thabbit Qalbi ala dinik. O the turner, O the turner of hearts, make my heart firm unto your religion. Wa ya musarrif al Qulub, and the turner of hearts, Sarrif Qalbi ala ta'atik, turn my heart unto your obedience. And also, Another narration mentions a beautiful dua the Prophet ﷺ used to also say, he would say, Allahumma inni as'aluka ka qalban salima. Oh Allah, I ask you for a good heart. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us all with good hearts. May Allah purify our hearts, purify our souls, protect our future generations, and allow us all to be able to gather under the shade of Allah on the Day of Judgment. Ameen ya Rabbil Alameen. Jazakumullahu khairan. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu.